Hey everyone, my name is Evan, and today we're going to be talking about the severe weather risk that's going to be coming into this country on Monday and Tuesday. That's going to be tomorrow and the day after that. Got a dangerous couple of days ahead, potential for strong tornadoes on Monday, maybe even also on Tuesday as well. Very large hail, two inch plus hail, Hennig size, maybe even baseball, the tennis ball sized hail, and also damaging wind gusts of 70 miles per hour. So a lot to cover in this but before we get started make sure you hit that like and subscribe button if you end up liking this video and if you don't like it hit that dislike button but anyways let's go ahead and get started all right, looking at the risk for today, as you can see, we do have a slight risk out there uh, for parts of Missouri going into southern Iowa, into parts of Illinois, Indiana, and Ohio as well. Then we got a marginal risk around that, extending really all the way from Virginia through West Virginia, northern Kentucky, parts of Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, Iowa, Missouri, Kansas, and a little tiny part there of Nebraska. Uh, we do have a couple of risks. They're not going to be too big of a deal, but there is a small chance uh, for a couple of maybe strong storms too severe. Some of them uh, maybe even carrying some spin. Maybe some tornadoes could be possible. Just maybe one or two spin-ups could be possible. We're not talking about a tornado outbreak. Really small chance for tornadoes at 2%, but that's going to be for Columbia, Jefferson City, Quincy, Springfield, Urbana, St. Louis, Bloomington, Indianapolis, and Louisville. And then also looking at the wind risk out there, you can see we have a little 5% here extending from Virginia all the way through into Missouri and Iowa. That's going to be for damaging winds of up to 60 miles per hour and a five chance of that. So a pretty small chance. And then the hail risk is going to be one of our biggest threats for uh, this day. Uh, this is uh, going to be later on today. We'll go over the timing here in just a second. You can see that uh, Quincy, Springfield, Bloomington, Urbana, Indianapolis, Lafayette, Bloomington, Hamilton, and Cincinnati have an increased chance here for a hail over an inch in size. And then, you know, from uh, Virginia all the way into Kansas, Nebraska, and everywhere in between uh, could potentially have have a 5% chance of some hail. But the main thing you're probably going to see if you live in these areas is rain and thunder um, with that small chance for severe weather. Bringing up the future radar for this day just to kind of look at what we're going to be dealing with here in terms of timing of this storm going into later on today. You can see that uh, there are going to be some storms potentially firing there in southern Iowa a little bit later around 2 p.m. today. Those should be non-severe, maybe a small chance for severe storms. As we get into 5 p.m. You can see some of those storms get a little bit stronger over there in southern Iowa. And then pushing this off to the east, you can see that maybe some spotty showers. Some of these could be severe as well uh, over there near Lafayette and Muncie at around uh, 10 p.m. And then pushing this through, you can see we even have any stronger storms over here just to the east of Quincy going towards Springfield and Bloomington by around 1 a.m. They officially enter into that area around 2 a.m. And then those continue to move off to the east. By the time we get into 4 a.m. on Monday, these storms should be be relatively weak, mainly just rain showers and thunderstorms uh, at this point. Now, pushing this on into Monday, tomorrow, uh, you can see that we have a three out of five here for severe weather, a two out of five and a one out of five. The one out of five is the green, two out of five is the yellow, and the three out of five for severe weather, dangerous severe weather, is going to be this orange here. And that's going to include Oklahoma City, Tulsa, Fayetteville, Springfield, Jefferson City, St. Louis, and parts of Indiana and Kentucky there. We got a yellow around that. That's a two out of five. That's going to be for Dallas, parts of Oklahoma City, just to the north of Little Rock, parts of Kansas, um, uh, over here near Wichita, there in Missouri, Indiana, Illinois, and Kentucky, and Ohio as well. Then we got uh, some spotty chance, but still a chance for severe weather in this green area. That's going to be from Virginia, West Virginia, Kentucky, Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, Missouri, Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas, Arkansas and a tiny little sliver there of Louisiana. The main risks for these days, we have a significant tornado risk. That means an EF2 or higher tornado is going to be possible here from Springfield, Lebanon, St. Roberts, Rolla, Fredericktown, Carbondale, Harrisburg. But I mean, if you really zoom out here, <laughs> an incredibly skinny uh, tornado risk here for those significant tornadoes. It's like it's kind of on a diet, to be honest. And uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's it's small, but it is 
is could be impactful. So if you live in those areas, make sure you're weather aware. Around that, we have a 10% for tornadoes. That's going to be a little bit further out here. That's going to be Evansville, Cape Girardeau, south of St. Louis, over there near Joplin as well. That's a higher chance for tornadoes, but we're not really expecting strong tornadoes in those areas. Maybe an EF0 to EF1 if you're unlucky, an EF2 or higher. Uh, just kind of on the outer edges here. This is going to be along the warm front. Also, uh, we have this brown area here. That's a 5% for tornadoes. That's going to be for Louisville, Bloomington, St. Louis, Jefferson City, Columbia, Bartlesville, Tulsa, Oklahoma City, Rogers, Fayetteville, and Fort Smith, and McKinney, Texas down there. Then we have a pretty large 2% risk as well with this storm. That includes parts of Oklahoma City, parts of Kansas, Missouri, over there in Illinois, south of Indianapolis there in Indiana, south um, Ohio, parts of Kentucky going down in Arkansas, and Dallas, Austin, San Antonio, and Tyler, Texas. Another big risk that we have for this day in this red area is going to be a 30% chance uh, for damaging winds. That's going to be, um, you know, 60 miles per hour and above. We could even get some wind gusts of up to 70 miles per hour. Then in this yellow is a 15% chance for that same thing. Then this uh, brown here, you have a chance maybe for 60 mile per hour winds, but it's going to be spotty few in between uh, there in the brown areas. Now, another big risk that we have going into tomorrow is going to be the hail. Uh, in this black outline region in the red and yellow, we have a 15% chance here on the bottom part on southern uh, Ohio going into Texas for some two inch hail and higher. And then over there near Oklahoma City, Tulsa, Fayetteville, Springfield, uh, in this red region, we have 30% chance for that two inch or higher hail there. So definitely be weather aware for that in those areas. And some of these areas overlap with the tornado risk. So some folks are going to have quite a lot to look after uh, for Monday. And then around this, when it's not in this black outlined, outline like hatched region in the yellow, that's a 15% chance for quarter sized hail. And then this brown, there is a 5% chance. Now, uh, going into the next day, we have another risk going into the southeast and the Ohio Valley parts of the east coast as well. And this is going to be um, mainly for damaging winds. There could be a chance for tornadoes, especially over here in you know Kentucky, going into uh, Oklahoma, uh, over there in West Virginia, Indiana, uh, and then also Nashville, Huntsville, uh, northern Mississippi could see a tornado risk. Uh, but you know the main risk that we're going to be watching here is going to be uh, hail, damaging winds, and a smaller chance for tornadoes. But I guess we can't really rule out a strong tornado uh, in the northern portion of Kansas. So let's kind of break that down and figure out what we can expect out of these storms by looking at the atmosphere for this event. Looking at the future radar really for the entire country here, uh, you can see that this low pressure system makes its way into the United States. Then you see another low pressure system kind of forms on the eastern side of the Rockies. That's going to bring up the moisture out of the Gulf of Mexico and really sling it up into the United States over Louisiana and Arkansas. And that kind of merges with this colder air on the backside. And that's what's going to give these storms the initial push to rise up into the atmosphere and drop some very large hail, potentially some tornadoes there as we move into the evening hours here on Monday at around 3 or 4 p.m. Those storms should fire, you know, somewhere around in Oklahoma. Could be a little bit further to the west, could be a little bit further to the east than what's indicated there. But generally, this first line kind of pushes into the Arkansas area. And then also, um, you know, that second line, that warm front, initially pulls up that warm and moist air. And then eventually that's going to get pushed back down to the south uh, into Illinois, Indiana in Ohio uh, going into kind of late Monday, early Tuesday morning, around 12, 1 a.m. Uh, there. Uh, and severe weather of all hazards are going to be existing the entire time along where you see that yellow and orange is there along that line. And that's going to continue off to the east. It's going to kind of take a break in the early morning hours of Tuesday. Then it ramps back up as we get into Tuesday afternoon at around 12, 1 p.m. There for Indiana going all the way down into the southeast towards the Gulf Coast there. And then that pushes uh, off to the east still could have that little tornado threat uh, really pick up there uh, in uh, Can or Kentucky going into Tennessee there in Ohio as well there in West Virginia. That's where the shear, the lower level shear is going to be the highest. We'll go over that in just a second. But dangerous day uh, for this storm. And then could drop some snow on the northern side as that kind of pushes uh, off to the east. And you see that new low kind of forming off the coast there. This could have, you know, almost tr try to drop a decent amount of snow up there uh, in the northeast. Still a little bit too early still to talk about this. I still want to wait about a day or so before we start talking snow totals, but some snow could be coming up there for you guys.
All right, now we're going to try to determine the spin that's going to be available in the atmosphere. And in order to do that, we got to first look at the upper level winds and then the lower level winds. And first is going to be the upper level winds. This is the GFS latest run here. And then pushing this into uh, Monday first here. Uh, and then, yeah, you can see that we do have a decent amount of upper level winds in those 80s and 70 uh, knots there, overspreading uh, Oklahoma going into Arkansas and Missouri. So plenty there in the upper levels there on the GFS. Uh, uh, also over here on the Euro, you can see that we have plenty there. And then uh, coming over to the NAM, uh, we also have plenty there as well. So uh, a decent amount of wins in the upper levels for uh, for Tuesday. I mean, for Monday, then going into Tuesday um, at around 3, 4 p.m. or 1 to like 6 p.m. here, you can see that we do have a decent amount of upper level winds up here in the Ohio Valley over spreading uh, Kentucky and Tennessee there as well. And, and and that's going to be enough to support uh, some uh, some uh, you know some spin in the atmosphere. Also, let's put this model all the way out there as well. You can see again the next day in Tuesday agreement there that there's going to be a decent belt of flow near the surface um, or kind of or above the surface uh, there with 80 knot winds as well. And so that's going to be plenty of wind. Let's see if we have agreement all the way over here uh, with the NAM model. This is little bit earlier doesn't really quite get all the way out there but you can see that you know overall agreement is that there's going to be sheer presence from tennessee valley all the way up into the ohio valley for the potential for tornadoes hail and damaging winds there uh, but yeah so enough winds in the upper atmosphere to support spin uh, now let's look at the lower atmosphere this is the gfs you need both of them to get uh, that spin in the atmosphere and yeah the gfs has a little bit out there um, kind of starting off this event around 30 to 40 knots which should be enough to support you know a tornado risk maybe a tornado or two or a few of them should be briefer and weaker tornadoes but then as we get into the nighttime hours that risk could increase a little bit there near missouri um you know going in from about 6 p.m to 12 or a.m out there uh, on the gfs and then pushing this all the way into tuesday uh, you can see that those uh, lower level winds kind of pick back up as we go uh into around 3 to 6 p.m definitely got a decent amount of shear there let's go look at the euro as well pushing this in uh you can see that yes we have some agreement there for monday and also a decent amount of agreement there for tuesday as well i gotta watch next to see where that moisture is going to set up to see where uh you know we can have that potential for tornadoes there and then pushing the nam uh, all the way out uh kind of uh, from monday you see agreement there and then pushing into uh tuesday some agreement there of those strong winds uh, near the surface so there's definitely going to be some spin in the atmosphere both on monday Day where those tornado risks are and on Tuesday kind of there in the Tennessee Valley going up kind of just to the southern portion of the Ohio Valley so definitely gonna watch out there for all hazards all types of severe weather uh, now the last thing the last two things that we need to check is whether or not we have moisture and whether or not that moisture is going to be capped and so uh, the GFS on Monday showing plenty of moisture plenty of fuel and also a decent amount of moisture and plenty of fuel uh, going into Tuesday as well, but kind of just stopping before the Ohio Valley. So it really does seem like that greatest tornado risk is going to be like over here, maybe in southern Ohio, very southern Ohio, parts of West Virginia, northern Kentucky, and then maybe a little bit less the further we go south as that shear starts to die down there. According to the GFS, let's look at the Euro. Yeah, plenty of instability on the Euro for Monday and then going into Tuesday. Same kind of deal, but a little bit less moisture. You know, the Euro solution here wouldn't be as bad. Um, um, as you know, a lot of that moisture, uh, you know, is is not going to be enough. The fuel is not going to be enough for the storm. So keep that in mind. There is a, a couple scenarios out there that say, you know, not as bad on. Tuesday, but let's go look at the NAM now. Uh, earlier today, the NAM was quite bullish uh, on some dangerous severe weather, and uh, yeah, I mean, there's agreement there for Monday as well, so all the models are agreeing there, but it doesn't go that far up north, so that one little model run where, you know, it had a lot of fuel up there in Ohio, like we talked about last night's forecast, uh, that could have, I mean, that was most likely going to change, and it did, so, you know, we're not really talking about a widespread tornado event here for Ohio if these models 
Miles keep agreeing on this solution here. But we still are pretty far out, so we still got to monitor the trends. Some things can change, but overall, there's agreement uh, with all modes of severe weather from Monday all the way into Tuesday out here. So definitely be weather aware over the next couple of days. Let's go over, check on to see if we'll have a cap in place as these storms start to fire. Um, not so much on the GFS there for Monday and not so much there uh, on the uh, GFS for Tuesday either. So that um, is a little bit uh, concerning, the fact that we don't have uh, really much of a cap. The NAM has a little bit more of a cap in place, but overall, uh, there's definitely some available fuel there in the highlighted colors, pushing this all the way to the east. You can see a decent amount of fuel as well uh, for Tuesday. So all those storms are going to be tapping in that fuel. They're going to be able to mature without really much interruption from a cap. So looks like, you know, it's, it's not the strongest event, but it definitely seems like the kinematics are there uh, for tornadoes and, uh, you know, large hail and damaging winds for both of these days. So please, uh, ag again, if you live from, you know, really parts of Texas all the way through Virginia uh, on, Tuesday, or on Monday and then, uh, you know, from the southeast all the way up to the Ohio Valley, all the way to the east coast there for New Jersey, uh, parts of Delaware and Maryland. Uh, you guys need to be weather aware. These are going to be a dangerous couple of days. Uh, you know, it doesn't always confirm. Sometimes there's failure modes. There's definitely failure modes with this storm. Some things can definitely fall apart, especially in terms of tornado risk. But I do think, you know, the damaging hail risk and the wind risk is going to be is going to be something that confirms out of this. We're going to probably have a lot of severe thunderstorms uh, throughout these next couple of days. So, you know, pick a channel my channel we go live uh during these events if you want to have a channel that you can watch with live coverage storm chasers on the ground bunch of webcams to show you all different angles of the storms make sure you hit that like and support button for this video and then also uh hit that subscribe button as well so you can get a notification the next time i go live but thank you everybody for watching i will see you guys on the next one and uh yeah stay safe out there